Let me ask you the first question before I obviously open um, the questions also for you for the auditorium. Um, you sort of criticized the sound logo of, um, of Coca-Cola. Do you have an example of a beverage company that does it well? Please, please use the hand mics. Who, who has a consistent sound logo in the, in the beverage industry? Where we'd say, yeah, that's if you consider your company might consider doing something like that, that would be a good source of inspiration. All right. Your, your industry isn't good at that. <laughs> Who else does? If you look in other ways, what would be a, another? A, a, not a, uh, a sound logo at itself. It's more an, an really intelligent usage of, uh, of, of product sound. It's all the, the hip baby glasses. I think it's a kind of, of, uh, of a, a sound logo, but they don't use it in the, in the, in the, in the, in the marketing uh, um, strategies. Right, in my opinion, but there's a, a product-owned uh, signal when you're opening the hip, the hip class, and it's a, the kind of a really strong um, identity for uh, for a brand, but not in the musical terms. But um, yeah, I mean, obviously, we, we've seen a couple of great examples where we see you have an interesting um, uh, TV spot or uh, uh, cinema spot. And you have good music coming along with it. So that sounds if, if you have a good creative agency, they probably that's not too hard to do. How do you get um, to what you said, strategic approach in the sense you first have to know who you are in order to find uh, the right music for you, which represents you? What, what's the trick? How, how you do that? Um, this, is, this, is really, uh, this is probably the most complicated part of our work because you have to get deep into the company. And you really have to know what co the company is, and they also have to know it. But this is the most important, because sometimes probably they don't know what, what they are. And uh, there's an important benchmark part, and then you have some mood boards and sound boards, and then step by step you develop, uh, the, you, you land what the company is aware to be and is, and uh, to uh, sounds and to uh, sound expressions and sound codes. This is a magnific uh, work. And this is, I think, I know if you agree, this is the most important part of our job, of course, because we are sound consultants. We are more than just composers or whatever, we're sound consultants. Mm -hmm. So we have to understand the brands. And how do you start it's, off if you have a... I think it's at all the, uh, finding uh, the same language. When you are talking about uh, sounds and music, you don't have you don't have the, the right expressions and, and, and words for, for um, expressing music or sounds. And it's the, the, the first step, a kind of sensibilization um, of the client. What is, what is the power of sound and what's, uh, what's uh, all about sound and what uh, are the, the several um, expressions for, for this. And it's for, for us the first step to get the, uh, the same language. And after that, we can uh, find an orientation in which part we uh, wanna wanna put the whole the whole uh, project. How does um, customer expectations fit into that framework? Because I would assume, I mean, if a company is on the market for a long time, they have already um, a feeling how a company should should sound like. Do we have the chance to change it completely, or do we have to sort of reproduce the patterns? I think it's depend on the on the on, on persons. Um, if uh, somebody on a on a on a stage who is uh, responsible for a brand, who is who who is aware of of the of the potential of sound and, and all the their intersections and and the the, the um, yeah the potentials of acoustic communication in, in terms of, um, of of brand communication, then we have a good chance to although switch and and, and learn or an, a not so good uh, a sound sound or audio branding. Um, but in in my uh, in my experience, this really depends on on different people. Yeah, the, the good thing in, in 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 music is that everyone thinks to have an opinion or has an opinion. So that's the good part of it that everyone. It's a bit like a football trainer. Yes. <laughs> everyone is a that, very yeah, good football trainer. One. Yeah. Inside. Um, yeah, the thing is that everyone he aims to participate and wants to participate in the process. So I think in our own experience, we are always uh, overcoming brand exp um, expectations. So expectations are normally sometimes kind of what will we get from this? And at the end of the process, pe uh, brands and br people working the brand are, are very, very satisfied.
and they love to, to work in these issues and they feel the sound of the brand, they feel it like theirs. It's their sound and they generated it and they helped it. They participated in the process of generating their own sound. That's a good thing. The mic is open to you. Who has a question? Who has uh, of you, one of your companies done uh, audio branding? Wants to share some uh, experiences? And you won't be allowed to leave here before you've asked it. Has anyone, wh who's of your company is doing uh, audio branding in some sort? Just have to raise your hand. I won't, won't force you to do that. All right, 1%. Don't believe the rest of you. Potential is that? customers. Mm -hmm. Potential customers. Then. Potential customers. Uh, ex excellent. Um, what's the typical customer who starts off a project? Are those customers who already were well, already in the field who want to change something? Or is there um, a, nu a number of customers said, well, we heard it's cool, we just don't know how to do it. I think there's no typical, uh, typical kind of, uh, um, of customer. Um, well, the big companies all yeah, do something, don't yeah, they? Yeah, there are some people, uh, some, some companies that they, uh, me too, uh, it's, uh, it's a quite interesting field and we have to do this. Um, we have, uh, the, the, the plans are, things, years are, are, are there, but we don't uh, have the power and the, uh, and, um, the resources to, to uh, get us on, online. Um, and there are also uh, the kinds of, of people who say, yeah, we, we need to, to uh, find a new field of communication because we have a problem. We have a problem, a lack of communication, and, and sound could be a tool to, um, yeah, to, to leverage um, this, um, the thing and, and to, to fill up this, this lack. How's it with CGM I Song? For CGM I think these are brands who t want, to take a step, want to take a step forward. So who, wants to, who want to differentiate more, who are very aware of their brand, who are working very strongly on their brand and the brand approach and so on. These are the perfect field for us. Mm -hmm. These are the brands that really, that really want to take a step forward in, the, in, the, in, their, in their brand policy. How much means do beverage companies in general apply to that field? I mean, obviously, um, Pepsi must have spent millions and billions in buying stars from the very beginning. Is that exceptional? Or? As far as I'm concerned, Coca-Cola and Pepsi and drinks are spending so much money in this that they really have to get a return. They wouldn't do it if they don't, if they wouldn't have. But um, um, yeah, as I said, this marriage with music, I think, is very useful for both. Because artists, and me as an artist, I would dream of, of, of marrying me with, with a brand like this, which are the new labels, the new promoters, the new everything. So they are, they are, they are doing a great job in, in, in terms of, of, of uh, helping musicians to develop, probably in a direction that musicians wouldn't have taken. But uh, that I find that, 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 that they, 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 huge amounts of money, just Pepsi. Uh, paid uh, 50 million dollars to Beyonce for, for this uh, partnership. Imagine. Uh, Rainer, you have a, a good overview of the whole European market. Is that a trend here too? Or maybe if, uh, no, we, we, we've seen the, um, the example of the uh, Red Bull Academy. Basically in Germany, every, every pop festival is sponsored by drinks. I mean, how has that developed in the last years? And what's, what's your uh, prognosis for the near future? Yeah, I, th uh, I think that uh, Ramon gives a, a great overview um, in, the, in the chart of the, the stairway of music, and, and which are the several uh, stages uh, right now. And, and I think we are we have five percent or two percent of this high level who are um, that the the, um, the brands are the labels. I think that's but that's, um, that's a really good way to to uh, to own um, the own the category of music for a brand. Mm. But nowadays, the, 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 most, uh, the most usage of sound in, in terms of brand communication is the classical jingles, uh, brand songs, uh, corporate voices, etc. Um, but that some, some big player like Coca-Cola or Pepsi or Red Bull 
who um, step um, um, uh, make a step forward. But I think it's it's could be could be changed in the next five years or five ten till ten years because that's our best practice examples and um, yeah. What, what, what's the trend um, in audio logos? I mean, obviously Deutsche Telekom has um, landed a huge hit uh, 10, 15 years ago by, by, by introducing their sound mm -hmm. logo. Is that had that been a source of inspiration for other big companies? Yeah. It, 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 yeah, the thing of audio logo is not a new thing. When you are thinking about jingles, it started in the beginning on, on radio, and, and the first the first jingle was Wheaties try Wheaties, and and that the the sung the sung claims um, have a yeah a, a kind of it's 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 old fashioned, and then the new brand uh, the new brand communication uh, um, yeah uh, responsibilities changed and. Then they have, then they say, okay, we, we use just only the melody and, and cut off the, the the spoken or sung, sung content. Like in Germany, there's there's so much uh, old jingles who are played just in an older logo term, like de 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 Sparkasse früher, or in the in the, in the food in the food um, de 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 Haribo mach Kinder froh. Yeah. Uh, Ten years ago, it was played with, uh, with with sung, and now it's changed, and it's like a kind of trend the last 10, 15 uh, years to um, to also use a sound logo in in a in a in a faster way that we um, we don't have to spend so much uh, money in the in the TV in the TVCs. That's also um, um, a thing. But I I could I could imagine that at a little as there's a small signal that the jingles came back. The more and more um, companies recognize that the, um, the perception of a, of a spoken or a sung content in combination with the melody uh, is much more, uh, it's much have more memorizability um, than just a melody or just a, a word. So I could know that in the next 10 years we have much more jingles I, again. Yeah, I think, yeah, I'm t I totally agree with you, I think jingles never went away. No? So probably they are not as poshy or as trendy anymore, but they're still there, no? And, and yeah. they, are, yeah. they, are so, they are very powerful and they're yeah. very useful, even if they are not attractive. Yeah, that's probably, right. No? Uh, the, not, uh, not the way, but uh, there's a trend that companies, um, especially in Germany, <laughs> I yeah. can say, um, the cut the 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 the, the, the yeah. spoken or sung level away. Yes. Like the, but we but are all singing jingles from uh, as we were kids, right? right. As we know. Right. We are keep we keep on singing them. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I don't know if we keep buying this product, <laughs> which probably would be the important thing with them. <laughs> do, do you but think? Do you think that there are any our global uh, sound biters, audio logos around that kids will sing, our kids will sing in 20 years on? Or how does, how does, has it become so universal and that has been, has become, we now have such a big amount of uh, sounds that are around that marketeers or audio marketeers will not have the chance anymore to be as um, sticky as the advertisers have been in our youth? I think it's, it depends on the on the strategy of the of the brand or the company. If a brand like Ma uh, McDonald's um, is changing uh, the whole direction of the brand communication, they also will change the, the acoustic uh, way. We, we we have this uh, and now it's um, de 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 de. Uh, every time a good time and but, uh, and, but I didn't recognize that. But, but it's new and um, so I. I cannot prognose or uh, hypothesize that in 20 years um, there are um, the same the same logos. It depends on the strategy of the company or the brand. Or to ask it in a more general way, I mean, audio branding itself, like radio ads, for example, are often very unnerving, and uh, the, the 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 traditional problem of marketing and advertising is basically the overload. Too much of it. We don't want to hear it. How does intelligent audio branding uh, uh, deals with that challenge? That, that's that's the, one of the most important things we should do is the, the differentiation. So brands need to emerge and they need to, need to emerge with the sound. So you have to create a sound that is unique, that belongs to the brand and to no one else. 
That's why I was telling that probably using a Beatles song in, in an advertising can be a, a good tool, a tactical tool, but you're not emerging, and probably you're not going to be recalled, and probably you're not going to be remembered, and you're probably not going to be perceived in a different way. That's, uh, that's, that's why it's so important to brand your sound. I think you also can use silence uh, in, uh, in your brand communication, because when, there's, there were, were one really intelligent use of silence in a, a Mercedes-Benz commercial years ago, before they have this loo, 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 and they, uh, it's, it's uh, history right now, um, but uh, I think it was in uh, 2000, 2001, they used a really um, long, silent picture of, the, of just the star of, of uh, Mercedes-Benz, and it has this effect that when you are watching a TV commercial, or you don't watch commercial because it was a break and you were in a kitchen or something else, um, you look to the screen because you thought, okay, it's, it's my, uh, my, my TV muted or what is? And um, this have a really nice effect and, and this is a playful um, usage of silence. And it's also, it depends on, on the several touch points a brand have and you use a lot of uh, web, uh, web communication. The question is always which, in which um, situation is the user coming through, uh, through your website and is his, uh, does he, he know that there's a website who is, uh, has uh, audiovisual content or it's just an active or passive thing? Um, when you are clicking on a video, you expect uh, a sound, but expect, uh, are you expecting a sound when you're just clicking on a website and the camera uh, or the logo or something like, uh, something like this uh, on? Um, so we. In, for, for our um, um, opinion, there's always um, a, a big consultants of please don't, uh, don't use sound everywhere you can and because it's not, not really central for, for some um, touch points. Um, you have to, to take in the, um, the target group and the expect, expectations of the target group into account. That's your last chance to ask a question. Is there anyone? If not so, we um, conclude our session, as always does Mark Twain, by saying that uh, predictions are very hard, particularly if they concern the future. Um, what, are you, what are your prospects? What are the three biggest trends in the upcoming, let's say, five years that all your branding will change or where most companies will say, well, that's the way to go? Three trends, please. Audio Within the audio branding, yes. It's not e-mobility now, or, uh. or aging society. No, the, the trends in. Oh, there's there's uh, one one uh, similarity to the the, the uh, uh, e-mobility e because more and more um, ap appliances have the the power and the, the technical um, uh, equipment to. To, uh, to support a good and high audio quality. The, um, one big trend in my perspective is this acoustic, the acoustic brand communication is going into the products more and more. You have, you have in the, in the um, kitchen, household appliances, uh, something like that. Um, the second trend, it's coming more and more. It's, uh, it's the multi-sensory way that you are, that the brand uh, responsibilities and the brand managers are more and more aware of, of the power of the, of, the, uh, yeah, of the several senses when we are developing um, um, combined and not separated. And the third one, the jingles are coming <laughs> back. Jingles. <laughs> jingles, back. jingles coming back, you never went away. Excellent. <laughs> Ramon, what are you three, um, three I, top trends? I, I can't tell you, probably. I was thinking now while he was speaking, but I wanted to hear what he said, so that was kind of difficult. The thing is, um, probably the website or the internet has something to say with it, because now it's a chaos and a mess. And I think there should be, something should be done. I mean, sound in websites needs to be optional. I think sound everywhere needs to be optional. So this optional uh, situation or issue should be in any way better done than before. Of course, new applications with mobile phones are the, the, the very big issue and a very big trend to come. It's already there, but it has to be more and more developed. And, um, and the third one, is people being culture, 
so people being aware of how your branding needs. Okay. So uh, the trend will be that uh, more and more people is going to use other brand strategies to differentiate from other ones. I think this still needs to come, but we're still a young, a young industry. So the big trend will be just uh, uh, that we will have more and we will grow. Excellent. Thank you, Ramon. Thank you, Rainer. And uh, we started off with when I was asking you if you could explain uh, audio branding within three minutes or three friends. Just um, we have a lot of background here, and what you might want to remember is there's one international organization who's done audio branding for about 2,000 years now. The Catholic Church and the bells. Ringing a bell is perfect audio branding. Thank you for your, um, for your time. And I think tomorrow at 10 o'clock, the lectures restart. Thank you.